Well, good afternoon, everyone, or good evening. Uh, welcome to uh, North, Northport City Commission meeting. Um, it's Tuesday, July 14th. We're in commission chambers, and I do call this meeting to order. Those present are Commissioner Emmerich, myself, Mayor McDowell, Vice Mayor Luke, Commissioner Hanks, and Commissioner Caruso. Can you hear us? I sure can. Thank you very much, just for the record. And then we also have city manager, city attorney, city clerk, and chief and deputy chief in the background, a lot of staff, and welcome citizens to our meeting. Do um, just a few little reminders. If you'd like to make public comment, please make sure you fill out one of these cards, hand it to the officer, so that way then we can call your name when it is appropriate. Um, just rules of decorum, no clapping, no shouting, no booing, no loud bursts. We clap like this in chambers, and we give thumbs down if you're dissatisfied about something. So uh, at this time, I would like to ask Ms. Lockhart to please come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Lockhart. And we'll see in a few minutes why I asked her to do that. All right. At this time, I'd like to get an approval of the agenda, and I do have a request. Um, could we please move 7A after 7C? That's my request. I don't know if anybody else has any others. If not, I'll go ahead and entertain a motion. I move to approve the agenda moving 7A after 7C. Thank you. I'll second. Anybody have any comment on that? No, ma'am. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and take voice uh, vote as the motion maker. May I ask a question? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Commissioner Carrison. I can barely hear you, hon. Uh, can you hear me now? A little bit. Okay. Um, 7C is what sh where you want to move that? I ask to move 7A after 7C. Okay, thank you, because I heard 7B. That's okay. <laughs> all right, thank you. Are you all right? Yep. Thank you very much. We'll go ahead and take voice vote as the motion maker, Vice Mayor. Yes. And I also am a yes, Commissioner Emmerich. Yes. Commissioner Hanks. Yes. And Commissioner Carrison. Yes. And the agenda has been approved at this time. <coughs> do we have any public comment that came in through the internet? No, we do not. Thank you very much. So I will go ahead and call you up one at a time. We do have a few public comment cards. You are allowed three minutes. There'll be a little timer over there. And then I'll let you know if you exceeded that time. We'll start with Mr. Cahey, Paul Cahey, and David Fernstrom, and Mr. John Mizell. Uh, I'm sorry? And I'm sorry, what was your name? The first one. Oh, thank you. So at this time, we'll go ahead and start with Mr. Fernstrom. Thank you. Dear Mayor and City Commission, earlier today, West Villagers for Responsible Government, WD4RG, on behalf of the more than 2,000 qualified voters in the West Villages Improvement District, which is Precinct 541, who signed our petitions, on behalf of those people, we filed them, 994 of them today with the city clerk. 584, 584 is the number required by Florida statutes to initiate a contraction of a municipal boundary pursuant to section 171.051 parents 2 of Florida statutes. We are withholding the remaining more than 1,000 petitions uh, for safekeeping at this time. Our petition say, states, I hereby petition the city commission of the city of Northport to adopt an ordinance of the city of Northport, Florida, removing all lands within the West Villages Improvement District from the city of Northport municipal boundary, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing an effective date, the full text of which was attached to the petitions that were signed when circulated. The uh, petition goes on to say, I am a duly qualified voter registered to vote in the state of Florida and county of Sarasota, and I'm a resident of the city of Northport, the West Villages Improvement District in Sarasota County, Precinct 541. 
copy of the ordinance was provided to the city clerk. According to Florida Statutes 171.051, the Northport City Commission shall now immediately begin studying the feasibility of removing the West Village's Improvement District area from the city's municipal boundary. <coughs> Within six months, the commission shall either initiate removing the area from the city municipal boundary or reject the petitions. If the petitions are rejected, the city commission must specifically state the facts upon which the rejection is based. The criteria for a decision are provided in Florida Statute Section 171.043. We feel the petition satisfies the criteria and is proper. WB4RG hired a land planning firm and their report is consistent with an earlier lawsuit on the matter. The Circuit Court of this county ruled in Sarasota County versus Northport City Commission and the City of Northport, case number 2002-CA-460-NC, that the annexation of the West Villages was invalid. Copies of the planner's report and the court's final judgment in the lawsuit were also given to the clerk today. To the citizens of the city of Northport or anybody else interested, please know our goal or purpose for requesting a change to the city's boundary is economic and it's frankly based on what this commission has done over the past several years and appears to be continuing to do even with the current budget. Residents living in the city portion of the West Village's Improvement District pay county taxes, city taxes, district assessments, and a homeowners association fees. That's too much. I'm going to stop my comments there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bernstrom. At this time, John Mizell. Hi, good evening. My name is John Mizell, and I am Mizell. Sorry about that. You, How are now you? you teach me a different way to pronounce my name. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, um, I'm going to finish uh, what Mr. Bernstrom started. Residents receive no additional benefits or greater level of service for being in the city. The district builds and maintains the roads, infrastructure, and improvements to public property. The county, as they currently do in the unincorporated areas of the county, which represents two-thirds of the total county population, um, can provide policing, fire, emergency rescue, solid waste, utilities, zoning, and comprehensive planning. Lastly, pursuant to Section 2-81, the City of Northport Code of Ordinances, this communication is noticed that the West Villagers for Responsible Government be considered a party to any future hearings regarding this matter. You are requested to direct all records, hearing notices, staff presentations, proposed statement of findings, or other documents to be used or discussed at a public hearing regarding this matter to the Law Office of Luke Fleureau, PA, address 2240 Bel Air Road, Suite 190, Clearwater, Florida, 33764-17. 03. Sincerely, John Meisel, Co-Chairman, West Villagers for Responsible Government. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. And is just that in this packet, just, John? What, what you guys just read, is it, it in this packet? That is in the packet along, along with the ordinance um, and uh, uh, what we submitted to the clerk today. Received from the clerk. Thank just you. for the record, the city clerk had passed out a packet of approximately 10 pages to each of the commissioners, city attorney, city manager, and she kept a copy for herself of the materials that was distributed by the um, citizens tonight at this meeting. So thank you for that. I just wanted to share that for the record. Um, thank you, Mr. Mysel. Mysel. I'm trying. Sorry. <laughs> I'm used to saying it one way. Now I got to correct myself each time, and I do apologize. Uh, Mr. Victor Dobrin, in your turn, and then Mr. Donald Richardson, you'll be up next. Good evening, Victor Dobrin, uh, <clears throat> 20327 Real Circle. We are here today because of past, uh, I would say, uh, uh, irresponsible fi fiscal decision, sometimes unfriendliness towards West Villages and lack of representation, as de demonstrated in the recent emails. We came here for the budget last year. You didn't listen to anything. You choose to dip into the reserve funds. I came back here asking to amend the charter with a proposal to put a cap on expenditures, which they go, it was the workshop here. I made it, I gave the paper, uh, there is no excuse. You look the other way. 
I came to this uh, room and I proposed a more sustainable future for the city, which was pre-plated 95%. And all, even today, only 10% adds to the non-residential uh, taxes to the coffers. I came here and I proposed that city, county government consolidation as I did to the county as well, because that's the sustainable future. The way you have today is nowhere unless you tax and overtax the people, anybody in the West Village. This action is not aimed as a selfish thing. The people who are thousands, more than 2,000 people have signed the petition and it's not selfish and we wish well to the people of North Fork. We, we believe that they are overtaxed as well and it's our duty because this country was founded by very thorough principles and give us the laws to start a separation, a parting away. That's what we ask you to do tonight. So I will ask you in the next few months, refrain from making go on, uh, on Facebook and making statements about $200 million. Yes, there are $200 million which are on the shoulder of the residents and the landowners. The city could not provide a piece to the last uh, public request that you invested within the boundaries. So please stop the misinformation because you, you create more problems within the nice neighborhoods. So with that being said, uh, West Village's residents have decided that it's time to seek this contraction ordinance. And respectfully, I ask you tonight that you consider that seriously and uh, follow the law under which it was written. With that being said, I am looking forward to work with you to reach that conclusion and to work maybe in another environment, but that is the bottom line I, I believe in and I think that you can do it. Uh, we, we have many other things to say, but the respect should be there. I am trying to be thank very you, respectful Dobrin. to do. Thank you. And thank you for your attention. Mr. Richardson. And just be sure and state your name for the record, please. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Donald Richardson. I live in Northport. Um, I want to talk about two things tonight. Uh, one, COVID-19. Um, there's this, um, there's this uh, Jewish Ukrainian doctor. His name is Zelenko, Dr. Vladimir Zelenko. Z-E-L-E-N-K-O, and uh, he, he uh, uses uh, hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin and um, zinc. And I believe that uh, I'm totally convinced that if we uh, adopt his method, uh, this pandemic is over. Uh, you can forget about uh, masks, social distancing, uh, the whole thing. Uh, it's over. If I'm, I'm totally convinced, and he's not the only one. There's a guy, there's a lady in... Uh, uh, in uh, Texas, uh, her name is a Hispanic lady. She has a, a medical center, and um, there's also uh, I watch uh, the news show at ten o'clock, um, uh, Ingraham show, and she's got two regular visitors on there, and it's the same thing. Um, and so this is over. If we adopt that, I, uh, my, I'll, I'll explain later. Uh, but just you guys go online, Zelenko, see what he has to say. And if you agree with me, uh, we, we can. Uh, this is gonna, thing can be over. Uh, I want to talk about the. Uh, I'm totally un, uh, opposed to this uh, deannexation in uh, the West Villages or whatever they are calling themselves now. Um, I live in Ohio, and I saw this kind of thing all the cities around Ohio, except for Columbus. And Columbus is one of the most successful cities in Ohio. I think it is the most successful city. And I noticed a lot of uh, uh, the uh, refugees and so on, they get here, they can go wherever they want. And guess what? They go to Columbus because it's a successful city. And uh, so I just, uh, and, and as the story was related to me, when they come in here, uh, West Villages, to build, uh, they ask Venice, uh, can you provide us with water? The answer is no. Um, they ask uh, Englewood, no. They asked Northport, we said yes. And I, and I used to read this uh, story to my kids, a little red hen. And uh, it's uh, this little red hen, she's living on a, a 
you know, a, a farm with all the other animals. And she finds some wheat. And uh, so she says, uh, she asks the other farm yard animals, would you help me plant this wheat? And they refuse. She harvests the wheat. She says, would you help me harvest? They sell it. No. Would you help me bake it? No. Come time to eat the bread. Uh, they, wanted, they wanted something to know. So it's the same thing. We provided this uh, water for them. We provided the services. And Thank you, Mr. We Richardson. set it up on a silver Your platter. Thank and, you very and much. And that, that's our thanks we get. I, I don't like it. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. All right. Seeing no other public comment, City Clerk, we'll move on to announcements, please. The current vacancies for the following boards and committees include the Art Advisory Board, Audit Committee, Beautification and Tree Scenic Highway Committee, Charter Review Advisory Board, Citizens Tax Oversight Committee, Community Economic Development Advisory Board, Environmental Advisory Board, Historic and Cultural Advisory Board, Joint Management Advisory Board, Police Officers Pension Board of Trustees, Northport Youth Council, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, Planning and Zoning Advisory Board, Public Utility Advisory Board, Zoning Board of Appeals. The upcoming expirations for the following advisory boards and committees, Charter Review Advisory Board, Environmental Advisory Board, Historic and Cultural Advisory Board, and Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. One Northport resident to serve on the Sarasota Manatee Metropolitan Plan and Organization Citizen Advisory Network. If anyone would like more information, please see the City Clerk's office. Thank you. Thank you very much, City Clerk. At this time, we'll move on to the uh, consent agenda. City Manager, has any items been requested to be pulled from consent? No, ma'am. No, thank you. At this time, I'll entertain a motion, please. I move to approve uh, consent agenda item as presented. Second. Motion on the floor to approve the consent agenda as presented by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Emmerich. Anything to that, Vice Mayor? Uh, yes, I want to thank um, the police, the PBA, for um, doing what they did with their contract, and it's very greatly uh, appreciated. So, thank you, Commissioner Emmerich. I'm good. Thank you. Any other comments, uh, Commissioner Carison? Hearing none. Um, I do want to also thank the PBA, but I also want to bring attention to everybody about the Warm Middle Springs grant for a, a half a million dollars that we're applying for to help redo those buildings, um, and also for the um, bulletproof vests, those grants for that also. Great job. I appreciate it. Look forward to hearing if we get approved on those grants. Um, seeing no other comments, we'll go ahead and take voice vote as the motion maker. Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Commissioner Carrison? Yes. Thank you. And I also am a yes, so consent agenda <laughs> passed unanimously. We will move on to item number five, which is the announcement of our greenest citizen. And at this time, because of COVID, we're going to just up here. We'll recognize you down here if you guys can spread out down there and look forward to the presentation on that. Thanks, Mayor. I'm going to invite our, our two city arborists up so they can make this presentation to our Green Assistant. Thank you very much. Do we Senior. have somebody that's taking a picture? Come yes, ma'am. There you are. Thank you. I'm going to stand. Barbara, come on down front, love. <laughs> front and center. Right in the center. Uh, good evening, Commission. Mayor, Vice Mayor, I'm George Murphy, City Arborist, with David J. Rowe, yep, my associate. Um, a little background on the Green Citizen program. Uh, this program is designed to recognize a resident who has gone above and beyond when it comes to environmental stewardship and protecting the natural environment. The Northport City Commission has deemed protection of the city's natural environmental resources as one of the key pillars of its strategic plan. The city of Northport has been designated a certified green local government by the Florida Green Building Coalition. <clears throat> the city continually makes efforts to be more energy efficient and achieve long-term cost savings, all while maintaining the highest standards of environmental stewardship and preservation. The Green of Citizens Award Program is designed to recognize Northport residents who also go above and beyond to protect our natural resources. The benchmarks for nominees include recycling, planting Florida-friendly landscapes, 
educating the public through local forums on environmental protection, outstanding environmental stewardship. With that, I'm gonna have David present. <coughs> Presented this day of July, 2020, Northport, Florida, Greenest Citizen Award. The city of Northport is proud to present this annual award to Barbara Lockhart. <clears throat> She has gone, she's done great work to protect our trees and environment. Barbara advocates for our environment in many ways, especially through her online site, Northport Nature Stewards, and her new nonprofit, Nature Conservancy. She is very concerned with beautifying natural areas and often conducts cleanups of plastics and other trash in various locations in Northport. She is truly Northport's greenest citizen for 2020. Thank you. Do you two want to stand on this yeah. side? And Ms. Barbara, I, I don't know if we have a mic. Um, maybe you'll be able to speak loud enough if you'd like to say something. I just want to say thank you to everyone who voted for me. I was very surprised. Um, thanks to staff that worked with me all the time, listening to my emails and meeting with me, all the person that had communicate with me on my Facebook page and support and donate. Thank you. This is how it's supposed to be. Remember, okay. Thank you. Congratulations, you definitely deserve it. Thank you. Well earned. Thank you for all you're doing for our natural resources. I'm not going anywhere. I'm sure you're not. <laughs> I would be disappointed if you did. All righty, at this time we will move on to the first reading of ordinance number 2020-23, which is establish a Buy American uh, preference or policy. I need a motion to read by title only, please. So move. Second. Motion on the floor by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Hanks to read by title only. We'll go ahead and take a voice vote. Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. Commissioner Carasone? Yes. One more time, Commissioner Carasone? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. And I too am a yes. City Clerk, if you could please read by title only. Ordinance number 2020-23, an ordinance of the City of Northport, Florida, amending the code of the City of Northport, Florida to establish a Buy American preference by amending section 2-402 definitions and creating section 2-421 Buy American preference, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for codification, and providing an effective date. Thank you very much, City Clerk. Um, City Manager? Or city attorney? I'm sure you can talk to either one of us. Um, <laughs> this was kind of a, a the city attorney's office drafted drafted this ordinance for you all. This came as a result of commission direction back in May to work with Commissioner Hanks to draft a America First initiative or an ordinance that would promote the America First initiative. Um, you have the attached ordinance. Um, if you have any questions, we're here to answer them. Thank you very much, Commissioner Hanks. Did you want to uh, weigh in? And yeah, you know, I think um, uh, you know when uh, this was brought up, it was at the height of uh, you know kind of the COVID pandemic. You know, when everybody was uh, was uh, quarantining everywhere at home, and uh, we were having our meetings at home, and it was coming out um, how you know uh, uh, you know specifically China had hid some of this stuff. The human rights issues, you know, started coming out. And I just think it is uh, very important. I, you know, I know that Commissioner uh, Ziegler up at the county um, also put this forth. Um, I don't know if it's come back with, with, with them yet, but I know that they put this forth. And it seemed like something that was good to have a solidarity, you know, across our, our, our county, just to show that we, you know, that we support um, American-made products, that we don't support some of these human rights issues in other countries that, uh, that uh, listen, uh, 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 child sex, sex trafficking is, is is horrible and a lot of these some of these countries they they help promote that through uh, through their policies and through their laws and i think um you know standing against uh things like that i, I think is uh is a, something that, that we should do and that's why i brought it up and i was thankful that you guys were more than willing to have uh, staff work with me uh, concerning this thank you thank you commissioner does anybody have any questions either for Commissioner Hanks or for staff? Vice Mayor. 
a, a couple of things. Uh, just to add another comment, it also preserves work mm -hmm. in America. So I think that's good because we saw during that same point in time jobs, you know, and those are very important. Absolutely. Uh, I do have a question of how this is going to be regulated. I mean, the ordinance uh, states America first basically is kind of simplifying it. But how do we, when we're putting out bids or making decisions, how are they given preference? All right. Well, we'll have. So there are multiple ways. I can tell you in our. Um, our local preference ordinance, which is, for lack of a better term, similar to this, that it depends on the type of solicitation. Some solicitations, it allows them, if I'm remembering correctly, to match the low price if they meet the definition of local um, preference. We have two different definitions. It's local Northport, I believe, and local to the county. Um, there's also in like a request for proposal, which is where you're actually based on more than just price, they're allowed then, they're given a certain number of points in the ranking system. So there, like I say, there are, it, it depends on the type of solicitation that was issued on how they would be given preference. Uh, if we pass this reading for the first, by the time it get, comes to the second reading, could we have staff recommend to us how uh, they would like to see this applied in the bidding process? Because right, that would then seal, complete it by the time the second reading is finished. Well, well if if it suits the board, um, when we bring this to second reading, we'll bring you not only the clear way that we do it in the local preference, so you can see and compare those two, as well as um, a recommendation if that's what you're looking for. If that's the will of the yes, board. Yes, please. It, we might take a look at what the county put forward in theirs too. We'll, we'll bring you theirs as well. Yeah. Mr. Hanks. Yeah, no, and uh, one other thing to kind of add, it's not so much a question, but was, um, you know, part, you know, obviously the service oriented side of things is, is not as much of a uh, topic when I'm talking about painting the building, things like, like that. But I, but I really, part of what I was really wanting to do was look into our, our uh, technology software you know, it is coming out. We have the FBI, we have Homeland Security looking at certain apps that are out there that China's stealing uh, information and data through. I want to, you know, so these were those things. We, we you know, it was said, uh, you know, we have that for all, for all these things. Well, where, well where, where do the chairs come from? Just to take a little closer look at everything, because I assure you, money being made there is not in painting the building. It's in buying these little chairs or these cards or, you know, it's all the ancillary things that you're doing every single day. And if uh, we have that criteria and we establish a, 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 a vendor or however that works, well, then we, we know this is a place that we can go and we're not going to be funneling those things. But I specifically, uh, you know, I wanted to look at, you know, all the stuff that we buy, even the technology that we use. Where is it being maintained and produced and, you know, you know to try to get rid of some of those back doors that they're throwing in these things. Right. I, I think... Um bringing the criteria yeah. mm -hmm. forward, the process or how you would do it is important because we also have to be fiscally sound. Absolutely. Uh, so we have to look at those bottom line costs and everything too. So I would like to see what, you know, staff would recommend to make it feasible. And to add to that, I'd like to see the local preference ordinance included by for second reading. So that way then we can use it as comparison on how local preference is done currently based on code and how it would um, maybe not apply to Buy American, but at least see how it's done with local preference and how we might want to have it done for this Buy American for the criteria. I think he stated that, that he would bring that back. I did, but that, no, that, that's fine. It's, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you say you were going to bring that part I was going, back. What, what I said I would bring you back is how we do the local preference. Yeah, I think you're just saying the same thing in a different way. Yeah. So okay. clarification is always good. Thank you very much. Did you have the Commissioner Carison? Yes, go ahead, please. I do, I do. Um, so, as I remember, there was some sort of a um, legal obligation that we had to do it. What is wrong with the feedback? Everything is muted. 
um, you're fine. That there was a legal obligation that we had to do it kind of like a, with a point system, and that we couldn't obviously just say automatically anyone in Northport got first bid. So I wonder if this follows that same suit. But I mean, if it's American, does it really follow under the same uh, case law? Oh, I I can't speak on the legality of what you know, but I can tell you that with our like I said, with a local option, they don't automatically get it. Um, with again, back to proposals, they're given additional points. It is limited to right. when you can do that. Um, like for example, I we cannot use local preference on federal contracts that, where we get federal money. Um, that that trumps our situation, so we don't use it on those. That's just one example of where we can't use local preference. And with a bid where the number one criteria is price, then if I'm remembering correct our local ordinance, they're the local bidder, if they meet the criteria to be a local bidder, is then allowed to match the price. Um, I think they have to be within a certain amount to begin with, but again, I don't have that right in front of me, which obviously is a good reason to have that here next time. Um, but as an example, that's just, if I'm remembering correctly when we did that, they're allowed to match. They don't automatically get it. Um, because there is a fiscal responsibility option to it also. Okay, well, I guess that in addition, I would like to see um, kind of a review of the legalities of it, because I know that there was, I mean, I was on the board when we created the local preference ordinance. So I would like to see if any of those legalities that were attached to that will be the same because that may give us more leniency in this case certainly we'll get we'll work with the attorney's office to get the legal aspects of it as well thank you that's not something i can give you did you have anything else commissioner carison nope okay vice mayor did you have any other questions did not. I'm waiting for Commissioner Hanks to make the motion. Well, I have a couple <laughs> questions before he does, oh, please. Okay. I'm sorry. Right. Commissioner Emmerich, did you have any questions? Thank you. Um, my, my biggest question is, how do we actually know that it's made in the USA? Um, because you could, you could get the product here shipped from somewhere and maybe just install a screw to put it together, and then that could, does that qualify as made in the USA? Um, I, I'm just wanting to be cognizant of what exactly entails made in the USA. I, I'm all for it. Don't get me wrong. I want the jobs here. Absolutely. But there, there seems to be like loopholes to be able to say it's made in the USA. And we don't really have a criteria to, to say, yes, this is made in the USA. And I don't think... It's our criteria. I think it's a nationwide type of a criteria. That's what I'm looking for. Well, well, there is. There is a nationwide criteria. Um, and uh, I think there are certain ways around it in shipping different parts and being put together and manufactured in. Or, um, But that being said, um, I think starting somewhere makes a statement. You know, obviously, there, you know, you know, there's things we're not going to be able to get around by federal law or what have you, but uh, we can always make it as tight as we want. We also want to make sure, you know, that we're able to purchase product, too, <laughs> you know. Uh, but that being said, I think it makes a statement that is that, you know, you're starting to see um, uh, municipalities and, uh, and, uh, and estates go to, you know, they're starting to at least talk about it even more, even though there's a lot of those things there. We're starting to talk about it more. And I just think it just shows that, that solidarity. <laughs> Um, I do know that uh, that if we're looking for it, like you know, like I said, because I made that same mention, you know, where it, where where is the chair made? I know we get it from Staples. Staples is an American store, but where's the chair made? You know, and that was part of my purpose was can we just look another step deeper? And if there's something there, obviously, you know, there's criteria whether it's you know a certain amount over cost. You know, we have to be fiscally responsible too if it's something we absolutely need. But at the same time, if if uh, if uh, the cost is good and it's technology that has 
that has spyware in it, do we really want that within our city, even if it costs outside of the boundary? I just think there's more that we could look at than, um, than some of that. And I just wanted to kind of drill in a little bit deeper. Yeah, and, the, uh, and just a follow up, please. Um, the, the criteria I was looking for is if it's assembled in the United States, does it get the made in the USA label if it's like 20% or does it get the made in the USA if it's 70%? That's the kind of criteria I was looking for is do they drill it down that far to be able to say it's made in the USA? Um, I remember way back when the made in the union label, it had a union label that showed that it was a union product. And I was just wondering if there was a criteria for nope. that it actually is USA made. There, there is a, a Federal Trade Commission um, label made in the USA that does have specific criteria. Um, one of the things I want to point out, though, is in the ordinance, there's three different definitions exactly. of assembled, manufactured, or produced. And they're all three very different definitions. Um, and that's part of what we'll be looking for you when we come back for second reading with when we make recommendations to you is, you know, not all of those mean the same thing, and they have very different um, criteria. You know, assembled, it means that you know they took all the parts and put them together here. The parts could have come from anywhere. Um, using Commissioner Hanks's example of this chair, well, this chair's got a ton of parts. None of them may have been made here, but they just put it all together here. That would be assembled. Um, one of them is manufactured, where it says process from raw materials into a finished product. Different definition, maybe you all will want different criteria for each of these. So um, again, just throwing options out there, maybe assembled gets um, 10 points, um, manufactured gets five, and the other one gets three. Just throwing examples out there, there's none of the criteria. But, but in, in my opinion, um, if you don't demand that made in America stamp on it, these are still jobs in America. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whether it's uh, the raw material, whether it's assembled, whether it's manufactured, uh, I mean, I've worked in manufacturing stamp plants, and they will get a part from, you know, another country because it keeps their costs down. But there was a massive amount of employees putting these parts together for the finished product. So I don't know as I want to drill down to say it has to be 20% or 70% or something like that. I would rather leave it like this and know that it's given a job to an American citizen. Yeah. That, you know, obviously, you know, that's the will of the board. I, we're perfectly fine with that. I, mine, as I stated, was just examples of how you could do this. Um, the, ultimately, the policy decision is going to come from you all, and we'll, we'll administer this based on the direction you all give us. I was just like they making the example. I agree with you, all three of those provide jobs in this country. The question is, what is your goal when creating something like this of how much do you want it to be made in the USA? Um, and that, that, like I say, that's a policy decision that's the will of the board. We'll just administer however you all adopt it. Commissioner Emmerich? Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, Vice Mayor took all my thunder away because that's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> There, no, there's a gun manufacturer, it's Taurus manufacturing firearms, and it's the parts are made in Brazil, but they're assembled in the United States, one in Miami, and they just opened up another one up in Pennsylvania. So those are jobs, and I want those included, because all the criteria, like the city manager says, meets that. So we're just rounding it out to where we're not just buying, and I'm not trying to use China or Japan, but if it's made in Japan and completely done, Let's look here and get something that, hey, maybe the parts are made in Japan, but we're assembling it here. That would be a little bit better. But even in your example, there is a shipper that is bringing that raw product to America. So you've got another job being mm -hmm. performed uh, within the country also. So there's a lot of moving pieces, you know, within it. And I, I would not want to hinder a company from making a profit. Um, I don't want it on the back of children, but, well, no. <laughs> but yeah, but looking, you know, at the jobs in America, I think we need to look at mayor. those first. Well, I will tell I you. Hang on, hang on, guys, one at a time, one at a time, Vice Mayor. 
I'm, do I'm done. Okay, Commissioner. Well, I, I do believe we have different labor laws in the United States as well than yes. some of the other countries. So hopefully we don't have to worry about that. Some of, the, some of the issue we were looking at too was, um, you know, a lot of our raw pharmaceuticals come from China. Maybe she couldn't hear me. Right? I hear you. Oh. Uh, a, a lot of our raw pharmaceuticals come from China. So we were looking at shortages at one point. We could always look at a shortage. And of course, that caused the administration to say, hey, let's start producing a lot of these raw, you know, these raw materi you know, materials here. And I think. Um, you know, those are things that do need to be looked at somewhat whenever you're looking at things. You know, um, uh, uh, you know, I get it that it produces jobs everywhere, but at the same time, you know, we're also looking, uh, if, if all the municipalities in this country came together, everything would be made here, <laughs> right? So if we start the process, and, and we're not the ones to start it, we're, you know, there's others before us. You know, so I do agree with you. I think, you know, you know, we need to be able to, you know, we're providing jobs, whether it's through the manufacturing and things like that. I'm not necessarily saying that if the bolt is made in, you know, uh, Taiwan or something, you know, um, but uh, I mean, you can even look at allies compared to non-allies, you know, to our country too. So, you know, those are things that could be look, look, looked at also when you're talking about raw materials. Commissioner Carson, go ahead. Yes, I think what the city manager was trying to say is that if we're going to mirror this from our local uh, ordinance, preference ordinance, you could give different types of points for assembled versus manufactured versus produced. And I, and I think that you can actually have that conversation a little bit more in detail when we get that um, local preference ordinance in front of you and see how that is actually utilized as well as the point process. Good point. Agreed. Thank you. Did you have anything else, Commissioner Carrison? Uh, nope, just waiting for Commissioner Hanks to make a motion. I got two more <laughs> questions, guys. I'm sorry. Um, the Buy American, I'm just curious, is there a reason that we created a whole new section? Why didn't we include it with the competitive bid process or with the code for local preference? Because um, I, I don't know exactly the code number for local preference, the criteria and the point system and stuff, but I'm just curious, why did we create a whole new section instead of just putting it in with the others? I'll let Assistant City Attorney Michael Golan address that. Okay, there. thank you. And then I have one more and that'll be it. And hopefully the, the last question won't be too difficult. Michael's in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Golan, Assistant City Attorney. We stuck it in there. It seemed like the right place to put it. Um, there was no other reason than it just seemed to flow better that way. Right. I, I, Appreciate that. I just was looking for it in the two other places. I couldn't quite understand. So thank you for that explanation. Um, my only other concern is twofold. What happens if all the bids have the same criteria for made in the USA based on whatever criteria that is? We have to make sure that we have a tie breaking component to it. And also, what if a pro product is produced here, manufactured here, and assembled here? Maybe that each each category would get its own point, and then you could have all three of them if it applies. And that's something that is predefined in the procurement process, and you guys will set those requirements when we bring it back at second reading. Um, a tiebreaker is start is decided before the procurement process starts. So if say there's a hundred points, um, the tiebreaker decision is decided before we put the solicitation out, so that you know, it's not saying, oh, we really like company A, and we'll make sure the score where they're highest, they're, that's the tiebreaker in the event. And we, we have ties. It's not in, uncommon for that to happen. So the tiebreaker decision is made first. As far as do you want to give points for all three of these, um, again, that's a policy decision. It, it does happen. Um, I can tell you that for some of our other solicitations, there is minor, minority business um, enterprise, there's uh, women-owned businesses. You can get both if you meet both. 
Um, it's it's purely decided on how the ordinance is written. Thank so you. If, if the commission wants that, then then we can do that. Mayor, I do believe that's what Commissioner Carison was getting at. You could have those criteria in all those categories right. adding up. Well, Correct, and they'd be a cumulative. Right. So thank you. However, um, can I just jump off of that, uh, Mayor, because I think you bring up something which has been uh, addressed in the local preference is that if it's unable to be done, that needs to be stated as well. Mm -hmm. Because some things we can't get made in America. Then, then everybody would get zero points in that area. Um, that, that's why it's oh, a, a preference, by America preference, not requirement. There are certain things. Um, we all know that years ago, TVs stopped being manufactured in this country. So that wasn't an option anymore. Um, so th that's possible. And again, that goes back to why you have the point system. Um, many times on solicitations that we put out, we have points established for um, a minority owned business and none apply. So everybody gets a zero in that. Um, you could end up Thank you. the exact Thank opposite you. on this as well as everybody could end up getting all the Buy America points. And then your criteria is equal for all of them. But if none of them have it, none of them get it. I definitely look forward Great to point. seeing what the criteria is and having a bigger conversation at second reading. So thank you for that. Um, I have no further questions. So since this is your, your little thing, uh, Commissioner Hanks, would you like to make the motion? Sure. I move to continue ordinance number 2020-23 for second reading, putting in... Second. <laughs> uh, just making sure that we're bringing back the local preferences, the point systems, those things that we had discussed here, that you'll pull those back to us. Um, for second reading on July 28, 2020. Um, second. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that we can get that back to yeah. you with all of that by the July 28th, um, oh. establishing the criteria and everything. Well, then, no, well, yeah, well, then what was the whole point in asking for that? Well, we can have the second reading, but not July 28th. Just not July 28th. It would be oh. the last Oh, oh I got you. I threw the date in was what it right. was. Yeah, right. Just yeah. don't put a date right. in there and let them do what they need to do. Right, so I so uh, so I moved to continue everything I said, just not on July twenty eighth. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Uh, is that second okay with you, Commissioner Carison? Second for uh, discussion. Go ahead, please. Uh, hold on, uh, Commissioner Hanks. You you made the motion. Do you want to weigh in on that? No. Okay, Commissioner Carison is the seconder. Yeah, I am worried about the timeline because I think we were just looking for a copy of the local preference. I'm not sure what else was being requested. Criteria? It, it was requested that, that staff come back with suggested criteria, okay. which, which points might apply to which one, and obviously you all will have the opportunity to tweak that um, and change it at the meeting. But you wanted us to get Sarasota County's criteria, bring that to you. Um, and just the logistical problem of it is the agenda item for the 28th is tomorrow and okay I, I get that I thought it was just a matter of us looking at how we do the local preference point system and doing something that was mirroring that I'm sorry I think it, uh, it sounded like it was a little more than that yeah it sounded like more than that did you have anything else Commissioner Carison before I move on to others that may have comment nope okay Commissioner Emmerich did you have any comment uh, Vice Mayor. No, ma'am. And I do not. So we'll go ahead and take voice vote. We'll start with motion maker, Commissioner Hanks. Yes. Commissioner Carrison. Yes. Commissioner Hanks. Yes. I'm sorry, Commissioner Emmerich. Oh, I get two votes. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's made in America. It's made in America. Commissioner, <laughs> Commissioner Emmerich. Yes. Vice Mayor. Yes. And I also am a yes. That passed five to zero. All right. So uh, look forward to seeing second reading and some of the suggested. Uh, criteria and conversation. Um, so now we'll move on to general business, which is the discussion and possible action regarding the Florida League of Cities Legislative Policy Committee appointments. Uh, city clerk or city clerk? That's well, got to be one of them. Or city manager? <sighs> Either way. The, Go ahead. This is, uh, as you know, um, Florida League of Cities at their annual meeting, which I'm not sure how all that's going to happen. I think the last I heard is going to be virtual now, but either way, 
at some point there will be committee meetings in whatever format they will have them and it's time to assign people or see who wants to be on what committees you have in front of you in the staff summary who was um, on which committees last year and we need to know who to submit to the Florida League of Cities for the upcoming year. Thank you very much, City Manager. Um, so yeah. does anybody want to change their committee that they were on last year? I, I don't want it. Vice Mayor, I'll get to you, Commissioner Carison. Uh, Thanks. I don't want to change. I actually want to stay on the same. Um, I'm enjoying this uh, committee, but they also asked me if I wanted to serve as chair or vice chair. And so nice. I'm waiting for uh, the election to see if they place me in vice chair. I did not want to be chair. <laughs> Congratulations. So, well, it's an honor to be nominated, but I would like to stay with uh, the Utility, Natural Resource, and Public Works Committee, please. Thank you. It's a huge uh, accomplishment to be requested or nominated for that position. That's great. Congratulations. Commissioner Carison. Thank you. I'm sorry I keep butting in. There's like a delay, so. That's all right. <laughs> um, the Minnesota League, uh, I am serving as president, and they've asked me to sit on the um, resolution committee. And yes, everything's going to be done by virtual uh, meeting, and it's by invite. So um, just kind of an update. And I have asked that we have the um, conversation about what our priorities are sooner rather than later. And I have forwarded, or I will forward, I have to look and make sure I did, the resolutions that the league is proposing. So um, just kind of giving you an update where we're at. And yes, I'd like to stay where I'm at. Thank you. <laughs> All right, um, Commissioner Carison, did you want to create an agenda item so that way when we can have that discussion about the Manis about the commission's priorities for Minnesota League? Already done. I think I contacted the uh, city manager last week, and okay. I think that they were already ahead of it. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, Commissioner Carison and Commissioner and Vice Mayor Luke want to stay where they're at. How about you, Commissioner Emmerich? You're you're on the Transportation and Intergovernmental Relations Committee. You want to stay on that? Yeah, it, it, it's actually it's actually very interesting because it covers the whole state and all the transportation needs. And you sit in there and it'd be like, well, we've got tra tra trains. What are we talking about trains for? You know, but. It, it incorporates a lot of different thinking with transportation. So I am enjoying it. I do like that board. So yeah, I'd like to stay on that one. Fantastic. Um, Commissioner Hanks, I, I don't see you on a committee. Did you want to try well, and join a committee? This I'm going to tell you right now, uh, there, there are three meeting dates scheduled and they're, and they're literally like days before I'm done. Oh. So I would suggest that I would not, I mean, since I, since I actually resigned my seat, it's probably better I don't get on a Okay. committee right right now That's totally understandable and i too um, enjoy my position on the land use and economic development committee it has been very very informative and um, very productive to hear some of the things that they're doing uh, a couple of them i i was able to kind of apply here so um, I, I appreciate that board that i also am on so last but not least, city manager, our finance taxation personnel committee. Are you sure you want to stay on that? So weird for me to be on that. Yeah, I, one. I know. Why, why is he on that one? I don't know. <laughs> Put him on that one. But uh, you know, at so the end of the day, it just seems like again? a natural fit. So yeah. I think I'll stay. All right. You're going to be voluntold again? Excellent. All right. <laughs> so city clerk, if you could make the arrangements with FLC that the positions are um, committees are the same as last year and if, inform the FLC. Can we get a consensus to have city clerk do that, please? Yes. Obviously, I'm a yes. yes. Commissioner Hanks, yes. Vice Mayor, yes. Commissioner yes. Emmerich, Commissioner Carison. Yes. All right. So we have a consensus to have city clerk um, make those necessary arrangements. All right. Now we go to discussion and possible action regarding the updating of the commission charter officer's photo outside of commission chambers. This is such a big, hot topic that I definitely had to have discussed. 
Um, so normally I turn this over to city manager, but I have a feeling he's going to ping pong it back to me. So certainly am. All right. <laughs> um, one day I was standing out in the lobby and I noticed that the picture um, of the charter officers and commissioners is like over a year old. And we have a new city clerk. And I really think we need to update that photo. Um, it's out there for the citizens to look at. Um, it's something for prosperity. Um, and I think that maybe we need to do this in September, early in September, if it's arranged with the photographer and stuff. And if it's not able to be done in September, maybe we can just get a nice professional photo by Josh or any one of our wonderful photographers in the communications team. So I just thought I'd throw it out there for a discussion. And if you guys think the photo is fine, that's fine. Mayor? Yes, Commissioner Carson. Well, considering we have just a few short months before you're going to have new people sitting in those seats, I can't, I can't support spending that kind of money for new pictures where these charter officers will actually be in it. You broke up, ma'am. I said that I can't see spending money on a new picture when you're going to take a new one within two months after the fact. And I, I tend to, if I can, I tend to agree with you, but this commission hired our city clerk and this commission doesn't have a picture with her as the city clerk. Um, and it's... Well, Let's I, all get selfies with her. Well, I, it's not for that reason. <laughs> My God. <laughs> it's not for that reason. Um, but that's just my two cents. And I appreciate your point of view, Commissioner Harrison. <coughs> Does anybody else have any comments or want to weigh in? Uh, I'll, I'll throw two things out there. I don't mind having, like, Josh or somebody in our uh, office to to update it. I don't, I don't have a problem with doing that. I could not agree to hiring a professional photographer and putting a lot of money into it. But uh, along those same lines, there's a pumpkin that sits out on that shelf in the I'll in the some. lobby. You know, because we have won the Halloween contest several years, and I mean it. It looks kind of odd, except for Superman's got his picture beside it now. But I would like to see... More stuff up there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some plants. <laughs> no, I would like to see a picture of city, all of the employees dressed up in their costumes, you know, with that pumpkin. It, it doesn't even have to be just the floor that wins, but, I mean, that'd be cool too. But at least show... You know the the festivityness of of what goes along with that pumpkin that's sitting out there. I would so. like to point out that uh, the second floor is one every year that the Hanks effect has been in office. I know that. <laughs> it's all because of you, Commissioner Hanks. So yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm just pointing out. I'm staying the fact. Is that it? <laughs> when I was finance director, the third floor won every year. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> Commissioner Rich, did you want to weigh on? Yeah, the only thing I wanted to say was, yes, the winning floor has to be in the picture. You know, that's that's part of the pride with the trophy. So if it's second floor every year, get used to seeing us. And speaking <laughs> of that, are we, do, are we planning Halloween this year? I haven't heard anything about... Um, Normally the festivities start getting planned in late July, early August. Um, so we are... The, Almost there. The... The Parks Department is having the initial stages of that. I actually just met with them a week, week or two ago, and at this point, we're still considering it. Um, they are moving forward because it is, you know, as Mr. Lewis found out when he first got here, Halloween around here is no joke. We take it very seriously, and we start planning very early on. And so it's easy to stop that. If we got to a situation where we couldn't do it, it's not easy to catch up if you haven't done the planning. So Parks is going to kick off the planning process here probably in early August. Here I thought we started like in March every other year. It seemed like... A lot of times what happens is the floors secretly get together. Yes, they and do. And decide on a theme that they um, will take to the grave with them if somebody else tries to find out what their floor's theme is. So well, that, that's not a city process. That's a floor process. <laughs> 
Not so <laughs> let's get back to the the agenda item on hand. Um, <laughs> um, I, I guess maybe we could do a consensus, and I, I do agree. Three hundred and fifty dollars is is a lot of money, and and I don't see the purpose of expending that kind of um, expense at this point, especially since come November it's going to be a whole new picture, and it should be the professional picture at that time. But for historical reasons, I do think we need to have a picture with our charter officers and this commission, um, even if Josh or his crew takes it. So, And it doesn't have to be a big, massive picture. Actually, I think every time the chair position changes, there should be a new picture by Josh or whatever. Uh, but, I mean, in between the elections, it, it appears as though the professional photography is done at the election. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a change, you know, that goes on in between the elections. So I don't even mind every time there's a change that there's that cheap photography done. <laughs> In-house. 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 Okay. In-house photography. You. So let's get a consensus to have an in-house. Mayor. I'm sorry, Commissioner Carrison, go ahead. Sorry, you couldn't hear me earlier, but no. what I was going to say is that we used to take the professional pictures every year when the chair changed. Yeah. So, um, yep. but of course, we got a lot better pricing back then. Yeah, I would just suggest maybe checking into some of our um, people like Tammy Garcia or What's uh, the other one that's doing the graduation? Uh, Rob Christie also. Rob Christie. You know, get some of them to give us a price. But in the same token, I have to say, if you're going to make it one of those really large pictures, the matting and the framing, that's a cost to. See, I, so, don't, I personally, I don't know why they, they don't just use the same frame, same matting, and put in the new picture every year. Why do we go through that? Go ahead. We Please actually are starting to do that. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Repurpose. They were supposed to start that a long time ago. Yeah, so, yeah that's, that's right. really expensive every single year because once, once the commission changes and you get a new picture, that picture, it just goes into the archive. And um, so... All right, so let's get well, to and those of us who've got their picture in there. How many damn times do I want to see myself? Oh, you get rid of them all. <laughs> get rid of them all. No joke. All right, so we could fill an entire wall with yours, Miss Vanessa. <laughs> all right, so let's get yet consen again. <laughs> let's get consensus to um, have a city manager make arrangements for in-house <clears throat> photography of the current charter officers and current commission. Sometime in September. Does that sound doable, City Manager? Okay. Um, so let's uh, get cons consensus on that. Obviously, I'm a yes. 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 <clears throat> Commissioner Carousel? I would like to see the pricing of the private as well, you know, the private photographers. For November or for now? I'm sorry, for for the one year, I think we're asking for one now. No, I, uh, the consensus that I was requesting was to use in-house photography for now in September to have the photo taken in-house photography. And if you'd like to get a different consensus for the photography for the November after the election um, with the new elected officials and charter officers, I'll be happy to get a second consensus for you on that. I was, listen, I know how Josh takes pictures. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure I want to know. <laughs> yeah, forget it. Okay, so we have a consensus. Still not too sure if yours was a yes or a no? Yeah, uh, I, as long as it's not going to cost money, I'll go with yes, but... All righty, so we have a consensus city manager to get an in-house photo sometime in September. Thank you very much. All right, nothing more on that one. Uh, moving to the consensus to put up Halloween photos with the pumpkin. And it could just be a little picture. They take a, they take a picture of everybody out on the front 
yeah. in front of. And then I believe we've got some pictures of our floor. Uh, we could get one of those also, as Commissioner Emmerich mentioned. And I'd also like to see if we could just put some really cool things that this is supposed to be a city showcase. Not to hold just a pumpkin in a picture of Superman. It's supposed to be a showcase of the <laughs> accomplishments throughout the city. And I, I really think that it's been empty for a very long time. And I'm sure there's all sorts of really cool accomplishments that the city has received um, that can be placed out there. So we just start filling it up. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Wouldn't mind seeing one of those pictures that's out there now leave either. I'm sorry? I said I wouldn't mind one of those pictures that's currently out there leaving either. <laughs> Why, you want it back in your office or something? I put it there. <laughs> I think your daughter was behind that one. No, I don't think so. <laughs> All right. So we'll go ahead and move on to the discussion and possible action and review of the city manager's performance evaluation. And I am going to turn it right over to city manager at this point. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate that. Um, as you know, annually, according to my contract, you guys get to review my performance. Um, I just like to say a few quick words and forgive me for the fact that I'm going to read them because otherwise I would forget half of them. And so, good evening, commissioners. I want to start by saying how honored I am to be the city manager of our great city. I have read all the performance reviews you have each provided, and I appreciate all of your feedback. I'm also pleased that each of you rated me higher this than you did the previous year. With the year that we've all had, that speaks volumes to me. I would, I would though, like to respectfully request that due to many members of our community going through financial hardships as a result of COVID, and the effects of that and the uncertain financial future that we have all been asked about, that you do not adjust my salary at all this year. Also, I want to inform you that at the conclusion of this meeting, I would like to request to take the next week off as part of my annual vacation for some personal reasons so I can address them. My plan is to return to work next week to help guide the city through the next round of budget workshops and present the commission with the city manager's proposed budget. At the conclusion of that, I will reevaluate my need for additional time off and lead the city through the budget process. If you need anything in my absence, I will appoint Assistant City Manager Yarborough to be the Acting City Manager. Again, thank you all for the evaluations. I see. Thank you, City Manager. Um, Commissioner Hanks? Yeah. Um, I would like to ask the board something here. Um, I would honestly like to ask the board uh, that we not do an evaluation today. There's a, there is a situation that, uh, that needs to be handled and dealt with. And I'd like to ask the board if we put our city manager on administrative leave um, uh, over the next few weeks or you know, until uh, certain things are, are, uh, are finished. I'd like to ask to, you know, if the board would do that. And in so, we would not actually uh, be looking at this evaluation anyways un until the end of this. Um, I've spoken with the uh, city attorney, and, um, you know, she said this would be a feasible scenario if the board's so inclined. Well, I do understand that we have to do his evaluation every year. He has acknowledged mm -hmm. we have completed that evaluation. Um, I agree with you wholeheartedly. We need to put the city manager on administrative leave pending the investigation um, and, and hmm. see how that all plays out. And then if necessary, come back and have a conversation about it. Um, I too had a prepared statement, but I think at this point it's um, a moot point to, to go through everything, but I, I definitely agree placing the city manager on it, paid administrative leave temporarily until that is completed would probably be in the entire city's best interest, Mayor. including the city managers. And Commissioner Carason, go ahead, please. It sounds like that's essentially what he just did. No, ma'am, that's on not. His own. He's saying he wanted to take next week off for vacation, come back for budget, and then take time off after that. Well, I don't see us getting through budget without the city manager there. That's my concern. And not to mention, this was not on the agenda. That's my second concern. I mean, our only conversation is about the evaluation. 
we can approve with 0% increase or not. But we, I can't speak for the city attorney as to why, it, what we can and cannot discuss, but I did ask if we could have this discussion today and she confirmed, yes, we can. Um, so I'll let the city attorney speak to that if she would like. Yes, ma'am, I think this topic falls under uh, the general purview of the topics to be discussed with respect to the city manager's evaluation, which includes his job performance and his job duties. Thank you, city attorney. Uh, Vice Mayor, you had a comment or question? Yeah, um, this is difficult um, in, in my opinion. Uh, the timing of administrative um, leave uh, comes at a, a time when the budget is extremely important and some other things going on. Uh, I think uh, the email that he sent out to us um, removing himself as the direct report uh, during the investigation uh, and taking leave himself but uh, or vacation himself uh, and then being able to continue working on the budget um, actually I'm okay with that until the outcome of the investigation uh, because the timing of the budget and things going on are vitally important right now. And I understand um, your thoughts on that, but we, we have to be very cautious of the precedent we are setting. Um, and we have to protect the city from any possible future liability. Um, our staff has come to the city attorney and to HR expressing concerns. Mayor, and I we, think we need to be very careful because of an investigation. Trying, we need to be very careful about what we're And I have already spoke to the city attorney, and I am well within my rights to express my I'm opinion. Just, I'm, I'm, I, appreciate I, I just want your, to make sure. I appreciate you keeping me in check, but so um, I, I am within my rights to express my opinion. And in my opinion, we have a responsibility to protect this city, our citizens, our taxpayers, and our staff in every which way we possibly, possibly can. This pains me that we have to have this discussion out in the public, in the microscope of the television, yeah. but that's just, let me please finish Commissioner Carousel. That's just how it, it works out. And I think by putting our charter officer on paid administrative leave is sending a message and it is also protecting the city. So with that said, I will let Commissioner Carason speak. Sorry, I, again, there's this delay that's driving me nuts. Um, <clears throat> we have a process. We put the process in place specifically for this reason that there would be no uh, preliminary uh, uh, jury or trial or evidential uh, administration by the commission that that we're showing that someone's guilty before proven. Okay, we lost you innocent. there. You'll have to repeat because we lost you, ma'am. My point is, is that there's a process in place. And the whole point of us putting that process in place was that this would not happen in public eye, that until the process was completed is when that would come, if it would come before the commission, if there's anything found. And, I, and, I, and I'm actually very concerned that we're diverting from what the whole point of that policy and procedure was. I believe that the city manager has attempted to make it uh, a way to 
do both. Uh, but in the same token, I think it is vitally essential to have the city manager there during budget because it's his budget. And there are questions that we're gonna ask that our assistant city managers will not be able to answer. And it is one week. Not even. And Okay. Second, Are you finished, Commissioner Carrison? I'm sorry, I heard a longer lull than just catching your breath, and I don't want to be disrespectful and cut you off if you're still speaking. I, well, Commissioner Emmerich is going to say something, but go ahead. Um, did you want to speak, Commissioner Emmerich? Yeah, I raised oh, my hand. She sorry. probably heard me when I was talking to you. Go ahead. No, this is for the city attorney. Um, what, what is the normal protocol when uh, you have a employee of the city that's under an investigation? What, what is the normal protocol? Depending on the type of investigation and the level of the employee, they may or may not be placed on administrative leave. Um, often when you have a high level em employee um, and certain concerns have been raised, they are placed on administrative leave. Our personnel policy allows for employees to be placed on administrative leave with pay and allows for employees to be placed on administrative leave without pay if the city manager approves it. So there are times that um, HR puts people on administrative leave with pay, and there are times that the city manager um, ultimately makes that decision. However, there's nothing in our personnel policy, and there's nothing in our charter officer investigation policy that um, authorizes anyone to place a charter officer on administrative leave, which means that only the board uh, would have the option to do that. But we placed a policy in effect just not too long ago mm -hmm. to for these situations. So what does that state? You placed put the policy uh, in effect approximately a year ago um, in a res via a resolution. And that policy goes through what the process is when any allegations have been made against a charter officer how, the, how an investigation is to be conducted and who is to do that. But it does not address administrative leave in any form or fashion. Because at the time we were concerned about keeping it out of the public until the investigation was finished and then bringing it forward. I don't recall, I have not watched the meeting, Vice Mayor, but I don't recall that, it, that leave was even discussed, honestly. Um, I remember the board did discuss different issues with respect to, you know, obviously in Florida, we don't have an exception to a public meeting for a personnel issue and having concerns about that. Um, but I, I don't believe that um, any, anyone discussed the topic of administrative leave. It sort of didn't come up until we had to use the policy for the first time. Is there anything preventing a city attorney from placing city manager on paid administrative leave effective immediately? Ma'am. No, no, you have that. You have that right, and um, he is uh, aware of that right and obligation pursuant to the personnel policy, and the references in this employment contract to the personnel policy. And the process will then continue, even though he's on paid leave. The process will continue. The investigation will will be concluded. We will get the report, and then we can act based on what that investigation proves or disproves. Yes, and that is how it would work. Thank you. Mayor. Commissioner Carrison. Hey, I did it. What's Commissioner Emmerich now? Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> Commissioner Emmerich, you said. No, it's me. Hang on, Commissioner Carrison. I'm sorry. Hang on one second. Thank you. Commissioner Emmerich, you still have the floor. Oh, no, she was. I'll, uh, I squirreled for a second. I'll come back on my second one, but let her speak. Okay. Please. <laughs> Commissioner Emmerich is deferring to you. Go ahead, Commissioner Carrison. Uh, just a quick question. When's the last time someone other than a police officer has been put on administration? administrative leave during an investigation? HR could probably answer that question better, but the previous assistant city manager was placed on paid administrative leave. No, he was not. He, was he not. requested to be put on administrative leave. That was his request. That was not done by me. He requested it. Mm -hmm. Well, that... <laughs> Which is a difference. I think that's a difference without a distinction because you were going to place him on leave, so... Actually, no, <laughs> 
Okay. Anyways, I was just curious because I don't remember anyone being on paid administrative leave other than those who were in the police department. And um, go ahead. No, I'm waiting for you to finish, ma'am. Oh, I thought you were going to ask huh? a question. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> go ahead. Finish up. Well, now I squirrel. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> that that right. um, our city manager has is the highest ranking employee in our city. He has ultimate trust and power and has to follow a strict code of conduct. And the allegations made in the complaint, according to the city attorney, he he admitted to Mayor, uh, 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 please. I caution you to discuss the underlying allegations. Yes, I'm not discussing the allegations. I'm um, confirming what you had told me on the phone and our conversation, and I thought that was not part of the um, investigation. All of the commissioners have been apprised with respect to okay, so I will what leave is part that of the part investigation. Out. I will leave that part out, but he is the city manager. He is in a very high level um, position that requires 100% trust. Um, he, he has accountability, confidence, not only of staff, but us as his bosses, the citizens. And, and I, I just, I could not go in any other direction but to place him on paid administrative leave pending the investigation. It is the right thing to do given the circumstances. This will become an avalanche if we do not act swiftly and appropriately. I want to say that yet again, we are judging prior to an investigation and walking mm -hmm. on a very fine line. And I think that when the city manager has stated he will be on a leave, and he will come back for the budget hearings, which is extremely important, and reevaluate and possibly leave again, whether that's for the duration of the um, investigation or what have you. Maybe at that time we need to have that conversation. But at this point, I'm really concerned because the, the whole point of that policy and procedure was to stop and prevent us doing exactly what's taking place right now. But the city attorney's and office. so I would uh, humbly request that we approve the 0% uh, increase, really, based on performance evaluation. And you can have your other motion afterwards. I'm sorry, did you say you were making a motion? You, you're, yes, you're... It's, it's your speakers. I move to approve a 0% increase based on the performance evaluation. And then if you want to address the other one after the fact, so be it. I'm going to second for a discussion. I have a motion on the floor to honor the request for a 0% pay increase based on the evaluation that motion was made by Commissioner Carasone, seconded by Commissioner Luke. Commissioner Carasone, I want to make sure I captured your motion correctly because, again, it broke up, and I just want to make sure I captured it correctly. Move to approve a 0% increase due to the performance evaluation and the request of the city manager is Thank what you. I should have said. <laughs> Thank you. Is that still your second commissioner, uh, Vice Mayor Luke? Uh, I believe, and I'll ask the city attorney oh, this. Hang on, hang on. I was asking if that was the correct second to the motion oh, because she okay. broke up. I just want to make sure that the second is, is still okay. correct. Is it? She made the motion. I second it for Thank discussion. You. Thank you. Commissioner Carasone, to the motion, please. I just want to get this over with so we can move on to the item you wish to discuss. 
Thank you very much, Vi uh, Vice Mayor. My question goes to City Attorney. Doesn't the uh, charter tell us we're supposed to do a review at their annual, and his annual was July 13th? The contract states that the board can review the um, can review the city manager throughout the year, but that you must conduct an annual review no later than the anniversary of the contract, which was yesterday. Um, there is nothing in the contract that guarantees or requires you to consider compensation annually. Okay, so we could finalize for you know, everything, accepting the valuation at zero increase, and then there can be a discussion in about the other topic that we were talking about. Okay, that clarifies it for me. Uh, Commissioner Hanks. So, uh, right, so my, so my question is to do with uh, where the city manager uh, mentioned taking time off if the next conversation, I'm assuming if the next conversation goes one direction, I want to make, you know, you know, you're not, you know, if it goes one direction, you don't need to be taking vac vacation time with that direction. Correct. So I was making sure that what, um, uh, what uh, Commissioner Carasone said when she said, with the agreement of the city manager, <coughs> you know, with, uh, with what you said, I want to make sure that that wasn't kind of like the guaranteed conclusion that you're taking a week off with this as your time. Because if the next conversation we have, I, I, I just want to make sure that that was separate from your from your pay increase, and that we weren't saying, "Yeah, you need to take that week with this motion." So that that is, thank you for clarifying that because I understood the motion to be just accepting the evaluation with zero mm -hmm. amount of increase. Period. Right. Well, That's I'm, I'm correct. Oh, okay, I was just verifying that that was right. a, a, not what Thank he you. stated. Yeah. Anything, Commissioner Emmerich, to the motion that's on the floor? Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm a little on the fence on this one. I understand he says he doesn't want a zero percent raise, but with with everything that's going on, I believe that that statement might be made and being made under under duress. And uh, I would much rather postpone this discussion until after the end of the investigation to see where we stand because I don't want to penalize or praise without knowing the answers to the investigation. That's exactly where my direction was initially. I want to see the investigation play out and then make a determination on what I feel his evaluation should, should be because, because my evaluation was made before, right? Right. And if, and, and as Commissioner Carasone has uh, very well stated, you know, there is no conclusion to this. So, as you just said, this could be being made out of duress. And I would like to see the conclusion of what's happening um, before, I, before I determine any of it. Right, because all of our evaluations were done prior to any knowledge of anything other than his performance and his past year's work. And the man has worked hard. He's done everything that we've asked to the best of his ability. And just because something's happening, I, I just feel that it's... City Attorney, can... Mayor? Hang on one second, please. Um, I just don't think it's fair, and then I'm done. That's City, all. City Attorney, we are not prohibited from giving him a pay increase and doing a evaluation after this, um, the conclusion of the investigation. Is there anything prohibiting that? There is not. There is not. So we can automatically, right now we can approve a zero increase and then we can create an agenda item and have this discussion later. Why not just postpone it? Because I think we have to. Because they've already we been to done. The increase. We well, have to do our it, evaluation. It, if it fulfills the obligation, the obligation of, of doing the evaluation from last year, but in the contract it tells you you can <coughs> do an evaluation at any point during the year. So if we close the door on the evaluation from last year, we have fulfilled our obligation as a commission. And then later, after the investigation is done, if we want to do something different, then all we do is... Um, another evaluation and proceed from there. Well, when I, if I can, I, when I asked 
city attorney, yes, it's in the contract about the evaluation, but not a time stamp on the compensation. All I'm saying is we wait till after the investigation, bring this back, and then discuss this raise, and just not give a percentage raise at this point, be it zero or be it five. That's all I'm saying is just wait on that. Mr. Garrison? I think what I think everybody's saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. You okay. are required to do the evaluation. We can't retro an evaluation that's already completed. We've already I'm done it. Up, it's done based on last year. Now, if you can do it two ways, you can turn around and reevaluate after the investigation, or you can evaluate with the investigative findings when you do it next year, one or the other. There's nothing that precludes us from bringing a raise up after the investigation. Nor is there anything that precludes us from doing a reevaluation. The point is, is that this is just specifically to handle the agenda item today mm -hmm. so that we are within compliance of the contract. Thank you. Let's not forget that one piece of contract violation can create a problem. Thank you, Commissioner Carasone. Um, I don't see any other questions, comments, or anything. Let's call the question to um, do a zero pay increase at the request of the city manager. Uh, that motion was made by Commissioner Carrison seconded by Vice Mayor. We'll see how the vote goes and then have further discussion. As the motion maker, Commissioner Carrison, your vote, please. Yes. Vice Mayor. Yes. Commissioner Hanks. Yes. Commissioner Emmerich. Yes. And I, too, am a yes. So now... Um, I would like to pass the gavel, figuratively, whatever, um, to the vice mayor and make a motion to place the city manager on paid administrative leave pending the results of the investigation effective immediately. Second. A motion on the floor. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's a motion on the floor made by mayor, seconded by Commissioner Hanks to place the city manager and paid administratively during the time of the investigation pending the outcome. Mayor, you want to speak to that? Yes. Um, we, I, I kind of said it already in, the, in my initial comments, but just to reiterate quickly, we have a responsibility to our staff to this entire city, to the citizens. And this is the most prudent thing to do given the situation. It protects us in so many ways. And it also protects our city manager. That's all. Commissioner Hanks. Uh, no, I don't really have anything to say. Uh, you know, I'm trying to find that balance with what Commissioner Carasone is saying and what we need to do. And uh, I believe that balance is better left unsaid. I mean, the balance is to speak little as possible. Commissioner Emmerich, do you have anything to the motion? No. Commissioner Carasone, do you have anything to the motion? Yeah, I have a question. Go ahead. And... Similarly to what we just discussed as far as the uh, evaluation, couldn't we allow the vacation time for the week, allow him to return for the budget? Because I'm really, my big problem is the budget. Um, and then on that last day of the budget and at that meeting, um, do exactly, you know, have that conversation and maybe have that motion then? Uh, or, I mean, if he chooses not to do it on his own? Because, again, my, my concern is the budget, really. 
Who are you uh, questioning with that question? Who do you want it directed to? Uh, who can answer it? How about that? Are you questioning your fellow commissioners? Or are you questioning I would city question, attorney? No, I wouldn't poll my commissioners. I'm actually talking to the city attorney. Okay, city I attorney. Mean, would it prevent us from doing that? The action would need to be taken at a meeting, not a workshop. I'm not sure uh, without verifying how those are noticed. Um, but, you know, it, it's up to the board. He's saying the time certain. <laughs> Right, that he would take the administrative leave on a time certain sure. on this date. That's I think that's what she's asking. Sure, you can make it effective, you know, when you want. I thought we had a special meeting on Wednesday evening, mm -hmm. um, and at that time, unless he did it himself, you know, who said, you know, look, as far as I'm concerned, on you know, July 22nd, I'll be taking leave until such time as the investigation is over. You're I'm right. just wondering if that's even possible. You are right that there is a special meeting on that date. So, I mean, that's, uh -huh. yes, that's possible if that's what the board desires. Okay, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm going to give I'm, the floor to Commissioner Hanks. He has a question. City Attorney, is, is there, if a uh, if somebody takes a vacation, is there anything that bars them from coming to the city, coming to City Hall? Going, you know what I'm saying. Does anything keep them from their from their ability to do duties? Or as proven by the my vacation days last week, no sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so no. So on when 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 you put someone on administrative leave. Is is there a uh, don't squirrel me, Pete? Somebody put something on administrative leave. Is is uh, there something that keeps them from participating, being a part of things, showing up, all all of that? The recommendation speaking to other pe people. The recommendation for best practice is that when someone's on paid administrative leave, um, that they temporarily turn in their badge, mobile and laptop devices and that their login access is suspended for that period of time. Um, and anyone who's involved in investigation as a witness or otherwise um, should not be discussing that with anyone else, but they are not prohibited in their personal time from spending time with anyone. And, uh, and I think, so, all right, well, I got my question answered. But Mayor? Vice Mayor okay. has the gavel. I, I am going to oh, I'm, I'm going to give the floor to Commissioner Emrich now. She's first. She's the motioner. You haven't spoken yet to it. Okay. I I think some people are, are are not looking at the seriousness of the situation, and I think they're just looking at possible selfishness as well. I believe this does have to take place for the safety and the integrity of the investigation. Worrying about a budget, we have staff, we have assistant CMs. I, yeah, it's going to be tough, but we're going to have to get through it. Put our big boy pants on and 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 go forward. It wasn't us that created the situation. We're sitting here and we have to deal with it, and we have to come up with an action that is appropriate for the situation. And with that said, that's pretty much all I got to say on this. I. Really don't want to be in this situation, but here we are. Thank you, Commissioner Emrich. Uh, Commissioner Carazone, you have the floor. Yeah, I just had a question. What about the fact that even if you're on paid administrative leave, it doesn't mean that someone can't make a phone call to an employee? I mean, don't get me wrong, that'd be completely unethical, but it doesn't prevent it. I think you do the best you can with what you got to work with. And I think wow. it. I think that would depend upon um, the intent and motivations and integrity of the city manager. Also, uh, is there anybody else speaking to this before? I do. You have a question or comment? Yeah, I have a comment. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> I understand the concern about the budget. I think one thing our city manager has shown is his uh, capability of hiring high-caliber folks. 
He knows people when he sees people. He, he, he understands the uh, caliber of what they're able to do and able to handle. Uh, you know, I am, I am proud of every single member um, that is sitting back on that back, that back table today. And uh, all those directly or indirectly were, were a relation of our city manager. Um, and I have full confidence in them. Uh, you know, a good leader and a good manager trains folks to replace themselves. And I have never known uh, Mr. Lear to not do that in, in uh, these professional um, uh, capacities. And as such, I have confidence, as Commissioner Emmerich said, that we can put our big boy pants on, um, that, uh, that, our, that, our, that his staff is quite capable. I mean, a man's only as good as his staff. So he is quite capable to, to, to get us through this next week. Uh, we're talking about one week, you know, and granted it is the budget, granted, but, you know, these guys have been working with him hand in hand. They've been intimately involved with this process every minute of every day of it. Um, I, would, I would venture to say that there's, there's, there's nothing that he knows they haven't worked on with him. And um, I, feel, I feel confident in the leadership that he, that he has below him. Thank you. Anybody else before I speak? Go ahead and speak, and then I'll speak after you. I'll go ahead. I got the floor, so, or I mean, I've got She's the gavel, right so. Watch out. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell her what to do. Exactly. I've already spoken. You, I know you haven't, so I was giving I'm you waiting. the opportunity. Nope, I'm waiting to okay. the end. Um, mm -hmm. I, I agree that budget is important, but I also agree with my fellow commissioners, this situation, far exceeds the level of importance of what we need to address. I am extremely fearful that this will become an assuming avalanche. We have seen it far too many times in the past. And I know that the city manager has hired very capable people. We will get through budget. We will get through the time between now and when the investigation concludes and we get that report. Um, I have utmost confidence in the staff. And I, I think that the city manager has expressed the need to take some time. And I think this would be in his best interest, the city's best interest, to give him that time. It will protect him. It will protect our city. It will protect our staff. And it will also protect our city. So that's it. Mr. Carazon, do you have anything further? Yeah, I guess, you know, honestly, in my opinion, there is no situation until the investigation is done. And so, you know, uh, again, my concern is about budget because there are several times we've asked uh, other dis uh, directors and managers questions that they just did not have the answer for. And so I don't, if there's no communication between the city manager and those directors or even assistant city managers, I have a big concern. Um, and I think that the budget is imperative and a primary issue for our residents. And um, I'm just concerned about that. But. Uh, it sounds like you got your majority. Is there anyone else with any further comments? No, ma'am. <clears throat> I want to cry. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I want to cry. Absolutely. We have to do the right thing. This uh, investigation is going to take a few weeks. By the time it's done, the commission's probably going to be recessed in August. We may not um, be looking at the result of the investigation until September. Top dog's going to be out of 
mission. It saddens me. It saddens me because of the progress that the city has been making and the faith that I've had in the leadership. But I have to continue that faith in the leadership that we have. I'm always somebody who tries really hard to do what's best. And if you don't fulfill that for one, how can you fulfill that for the next? So even though I would have loved to have seen something turn out in another direction, at this point I don't see how it can. So I will be supporting the motion. As the motion maker, Mayor? Could, could, could you restate the motion? Just... Of course. The motion on the floor given by the mayor, seconded by Commissioner Hanks, is to place the city manager on paid administrative leave until the end of the investigation and it be effective immediately. Yeah, thank you. Actually, mayor? I didn't actually. Uh, I was about to add. Actually, the... I did not add anything about until after the investigation. Could pending the conclusion. Place city manager on paid administrative leave pending outcome of investigation okay. starting okay. immediately. All right. Thank you. Oh, is that not what I said? Yeah, it yeah. is. Okay. I apologize. Yeah, I think you okay. just worded it just a hair differently. Yeah. <laughs> just a little. Sorry. All right. So call the vote, Mayor. With a heavy heart, yes. Seconder, Commissioner Hanks. <laughs> yes. Yes. Commissioner Emmerich. Yeah, it's, it's tough, yes. Commissioner Carazone. No. Nope. And myself, a yes. Voice vote is four to one, uh, placing the city manager on paid administrative leave to the outcome of the investigation. Vice Mayor, if you could please keep the gavel, I'd like to make another motion. Go ahead, Mayor. In the uh, city manager's request that he read earlier, he was going to place Assistant City Manager Yarborough um, as the fill-in um, while, while he was absent. Um, at this time, we do need to have an acting city manager um, due to his absence being placed on leave. So I'd like to make a motion to in, in city attorney, I don't know if, if I, mm. how, how do I do this? Because we, we cannot be without a city manager. Do we, do we name somebody as acting city manager? No. Do, we, do we just help me out here, please? <clears throat> yes, I think, an act, I think it would be an acting city manager, not interim, not because interim. we do still have a city manager. It will just be out of pocket. Now, do we have to ask this person if they are desirous of taking that role in the as acting assistant, as acting city manager? That'd be a good idea. It kind of would be. <laughs> well, I would hope any assistant that was hired in in the position would be willing and ready I to step too. up I at any point in time. But we've seen it in the past that that wasn't always the case. So that's okay, why I have a motion on the floor yeah. to. I, I didn't know if city man, uh, city attorney was finished. Yeah, I'm finished, but the, the motion didn't include a name. Yeah, I, did, I didn't finish it. <laughs> I didn't finish it. Um, Can I? I make a motion to have assistant city manager Yarborough placed as acting city manager. Um, that's it. Second. It's a motion on the floor to appoint. Uh, Assistant City Manager Yarborough uh, as acting city manager during the duration of th the investigation. Is that all right that I... I would say the administrative leave. Administrative leave, outcome of the administrative leave. And it was seconded by Commissioner Hanks. Mayor? Commissioner Hanks? No, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, as I stated before, our, our city manager is a phenomenal um, a reader of people. He he uh, he's phenomenal at uh, at uh, looking at folks and and knowing what they have in them. And uh, I'm very confident in Assistant City Manager Yarbrough, and would uh, also, as the vice mayor said, hope that any one of our any one of our staff down there, uh, if the time comes and and uh, the call is a is, is upon them, would uh, would accept it, uh, even if it's not such a glorious time to accept, but would do it out of duty to uh, to their community. So, um, is there? Commissioner Carazone, would you like to comment? Yeah, I, there is no reason for accepting. Uh, this is not an interim position. This is right. basically just a temporary position. It's part of their actual um, oh. job duties. I know, we just had somebody so, not do that before. <laughs> no, which that was which is correct, but you have, you have two first. assistant managers. We're naming one of those assistants. So this is right. necessary. Well, the, the request of whether they take it or not wasn't actually part of the commission's uh, or the mayor's motion. So I'm okay with the way that the motion is stated. I'm just saying that. And, and I understand and, that, but after everybody has comments in regards to the motion, I'm going to ask uh, Assistant Manager Yarborough to step forward to the mic and let us know if he accepts the acting position. So is there any other commissioners with comments? That's exactly what I was going to do because he's we've yes, talked about you know, cuz we've talked about it but he, nobody's been asked. So right. I wanted to make it, you know, just well, a little bit more official. That's all. Yeah, we needed we needed everybody to voice before <laughs> we actually asked him. Yes, ma'am. I also didn't know uh, commissioner if you wanted to discuss any type of Adjustment and compensation uh, during the time you'd have someone as acting. I'm, I'm not sure if we've done that. I think that's automatic before. for out of out of position salary. Well, I, no, I there's nothing automatic when it comes to a charter officer position. That's true. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and speak to that. This is not an interim position. This is an acting position, and as it has been Thank stated you. previously, it is part of the job description mm -hmm. that they step in temporarily to mm -hmm. take over the position. Uh, of city manager. This is a, a very short duration of time, only a matter of few weeks, and I don't see it necessary to change the pay at this point in time. If he were take, filling an interim, oh yeah, definitely. But this is acting and fulfilling what he has within his contract. Yeah, Anybody vice, else to that? Yeah, Vice Mayor, I, I, you know, I think we have, you know, uh, our, our city clerk uh, for, a, for a time, you know, mm -hmm. un, until she was interim, yeah. she did not receive that that pay raise at, at that time until she became the interim. interim. Until she became interim as well. No. That's that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that. Anyone else with any comment before Mr. Yarborough? Would you step forward and let us know if you would accept that position, sir? Uh, yes, ma'am. Jason Yarborough, Assistant City Manager. Um, I am here to serve at the pleasure of the commission. However you need me, I'm here. I've got, we've got great people. We have a great team and we're here to step up and do what needs to be done. Mr. Lear has taught us well, mentored us, and uh, we're here to serve. Thank you, sir. And I had, I have no doubt. Thank you. Can I ask one quick question? Yes, ma'am, um, go ahead. In fairness to everybody's memory, at this time, given the situation and discussion that we're having, <clears throat> I would like to ask if somebody could research how we did it when Miss Heather was deputy city clerk, which I know was charter officer, when you filled in when Miss Katie was out on maternity leave, if we could get documentation that either confirms or states differently that you didn't get any additional salary during that short period of time prior to us naming you as interim. And I would like to add, she I, was charter officer at that time, too. This was a different exactly. style position, too. Uh, I don't think that has to go along with the motion that we have on the floor. I think that's something that can be investigated. 
Uh, but I think the motion on the floor needs to stand as is without any further convolution. Uh, so, Mayor, your vote? Yes. Seconder, yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. Commissioner Carazon? This is to yeah. place, okay, this is to place Assistant City Manager Yarborough as Acting City Manager. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. And I am a yes. Uh, that voice vote, vote carries 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Yarborough. Thank you, Mr. Yarborough. And the Thank gavel you, City Manager. is going back. Thank you. I got it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I would like to double check, and I, I agree with you that it was a charter officer position different, and maybe it's not necessary because, like Vice Mayor said, the position of acting city manager is very temporary and his contract and his job description does say to do duties as needed given the situation he is assistant so um all right thank you for letting me talk through that all right anything else on this subject guys uh i'm going to bring something up that i was going to bring up during commission comments but uh this is along the same lines i mean we may want to discuss this and that's the emergency order uh, we place mm -hmm. that in the hands of the city manager uh, there are some people who feel uh, in the community that that <coughs> emergency order needs to go back to the commission but with city manager being placed on um, paid leave duty uh, I think maybe we need to have a discussion on that. I think it might fall to city assistant city manager Yarborough anyhow, but I'm going to ask city attorney if you could speak and address where we might be with this emergency order. Yes, ma'am. Um, you have appointed an acting <coughs> city manager who will have the powers of the city manager in his absence. So that would mean that the acting city manager would have the authority to extend the emergency every seven days, as the city manager has been doing in, uh, in his discretion, and to enter emergency orders. Um, you know, we have several on file, the same way the city manager would. Now, I am not um, asking that the emergency order be ceased. I mean, the city manager explained in the last meeting how imperative it is in order to receive funding. Um, could you speak to that also <clears throat> as to why we might want to continue with the city manager doing this instead of it going back to the commission? So under state statute, um, once you have declared a state of local emergency, which we've been in for some time now, I think we just got the 17th extension, so that makes it 17 or 18 weeks. That uh, And under our local emergency ordinance, that gives the city manager authority to do things like enter these emergency orders, things that uh, maybe need to do be done more quickly than bringing them forward for commission consideration. Now, unlike an emergency, maybe like where you have a hurricane, our commission has been meeting during this pandemic. It's really an unprecedented situation. And all of the emergency orders that the city manager has entered that affect regulations or that would be outside of his normal day-to-day -day, um, authority have been brought before the commission for consideration and ratification at a public meeting like this one. So the commission certainly is still having its say and, and influence over those orders. Other orders have been drafted at the direction of the commission as well. So the commission is also involved to that extent. With respect to the extension of the emergency itself, uh, again, when you're in a state of a local emergency under state statute, it automatically expires in seven days unless renewed. So if the commission were to, um, the, the commission and the ordinance that declared this emergency gave that authority to the city manager, this commission were to take that back, the commission would have to meet in a public meeting every seven days to do that, as opposed to now, the city manager issues an administrative um, extension that's done by paper it's filed with the city clerk um, and so there's a lot less that has to go into that um, 
Also, we have, we have not researched whether the, if you were to take the power back, if that would be construed as having ended the emergency and then started a second one or, or not. It would be pretty unusual midstream to change the process. Right. Of course, we've never been in a situation like this, right, where you have an emergency that extends for such a lengthy period of time. So we may not even have any precedent on that. Um, I, and I, I know it's the commission's will not to do anything that would interfere with federal funds or state funds. You mentioned, um, well, this, I'll ask you about, um, well, you, you brought up where we ratified all of the emergency orders that he put out. We ratified. When he undid them, we also ratified them. They went through the, the agenda item, and we said yay and nay to everything that he did. So one of the concerns is that whoever has this power within uh, emergency orders, that they can do whatever they want to do. They can just arbitrarily um, get frosties for everybody. <laughs> I don't know, just, you know, do whatever they want to do. Uh, is not the emergency order limited to just what would be occurring in the emergency? I mean... They do not have the power to spend money without us appropriating it, correct? Yes. There is, the, the emergency powers are broad, but they must be related to the emergency. emergency. And okay, thank you. The, the person is also under all the same ethical and statutory obligations that they would be under in the general exercise of, of their job duties, as well as having to answer to the commission. And, you know, you all are meeting regularly, even when, um, we were all staying at home. You were meeting regularly by Zoom and well apprised of, of what was happening. Yes. Good question. If we were to consider doing us meeting every Tuesday to re-ratify, could we do that by Zoom? Under the governor's current emergency order, you could. Um, I'm not sure. I don't recall off the top of my head when that currently expires. I think it expires July 30th, but I also think he just entered another order that, that possibly may relate to it. Yeah, so it might, it, that might be extended another 60 days. But there's a special order in place by the governor that allows, um, that allows us to meet via communications media technology to establish a quorum, which means that all of you can be on Zoom just like before. Or you can have a mix in the room and a mix on technology. Um, does it have to be a supermajority vote so that four of the five have to be a yes to extend it to seven days? I would I would have to check. It's I looked that up 17 or 18 weeks ago. It would be considered an emergency meeting then, wouldn't it? Just because the subject of the meeting relates to an emergency does not mean it's an emergency meeting. You gotcha. can do it at a, an emergency meeting is a meeting that's not regularly scheduled and that's scheduled with short notice, this type of thing. <laughs> Um, usually these ordinances are adopted in emergency meetings and it does implicate the charter provision that I think you're referring to vice mayor because of the timing issue oh there's a hurricane coming you know we can't do proper public notice we can do 24 hours and then we'll meet and do a, an ordinance of one reading um, now we're in a situation where even though we're an emergency we don't have those constraints so what does that mean do we you know do we have to give the full notice like we normally would do we have to do two readings like we normally would it's um, I appreciate it. it. It's unprecedented. So what happens when you're in unprecedented times, you know, and, and you take action, you don't know what's going to happen. So my advice generally is to take the more conservative route because that's the one that's least likely to become precedent for next time. <laughs> Could we get a consensus uh, of this board? Can I, Commissioner Harrison? Yeah, you know, uh, we're talking about taking away the emergency order uh, ability from our assistant city manager, we literally just sat here and said that we believe that he has all capabilities that the city manager had. Mm -hmm. I don't even know why this conversation is coming up. It, it's being brought up, and I, I told um, a citizen who was questioning me on it that I would bring this topic up. As I stated, um, I was going to do this during... Commission comments, 
but that's why I'm wanting to get a consensus of this board that we continue this emergency order in the fashion that we are doing currently without changing it. Because there are some in the citizenry who want it brought back to the commission. No, I, I mean, I, I, there's no reason to have a consensus that already is so, but in the same token, I just don't like placating to a few, so. But you don't like what? Before we continue, I just want to, to point out for clarity that um, Mr. Yarbrough is uh, is taking the city manager's position at the dais because the previous motion was effective immediately. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a problem in uh, solidifying that this commission still wants to continue in the same manner that we have been with this emergency order? I mean, does that hurt anything to solidify it? For the public's benefit, I am good to continue with the way things have been. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, we need to continue with the way things are right now. Thank you. Um, I, I think it, it the the appropriate action to take, and I know that it looks the optics are very strange to citizens who don't understand the the inner workings. Um, some some citizens do understand. Um, it's been 17 weeks. I think everybody's getting a case of the wearies. And, and wanting things to go back to normal at this time, it's just, and then we're going on, on hiatus in, in two weeks. Right. And then we're, it, it's just better for right now. And, and we all know to revisit this as needed. Um, I've mentioned it about a month or so ago. You've mentioned it. I'm sure we're, we are very much in tune to what the citizens are saying, the concerns that they have, and the obligations that we as a board have. So um, I, I'm, I'm all for keeping it the way that it is. And Commissioner Emmerich. I'm good with it. Okay. Commissioner no, I don't raise Garrison. my hand. I'm good. You no, call I'm me. No, getting a consensus. I'm sorry. Uh, oh. <laughs> Commissioner Carson. I thought it was pretty clear. I don't even know why we're conversing about this. If we got trust in him to do his duties, then... I we it, have trust in them to continue on. I get it. You had somebody ask you to address <coughs> it, and that's okay. But and it had nothing to do with um, acting city manager Yarborough. It had to do with the situation before even tonight. Thank you, Vanessa. All right. So, is there anything else regarding the um, the, the topic at hand regarding the city manager's performance evaluation um, and with the acting assistance, acting city manager, thank you, um, at being at the helm. Any other questions related to that discussion? Uh, acting city manager, did you want to speak to anything? No, ma'am, I think enough's been said tonight. Thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> I agree. I agree. All right. So at this point, uh, we are on to public comment. Is there any public comment to Vice Mayor? There is not. Is there any public comment, uh, City Clerk? Thank you very much. Commission Communications, folks. We'll start with Commissioner Carasone. Yes, I do have a request. All right. Um, a request to put a bullet point. A memo together about the process and um, kind of in a timeline of the uh, contraction of, of, I guess, specifically Warm Mill, uh, all the Warm Mill Springs, West Villages, um, aka de annexation. Uh, kind of a this is the process, this comes first, this comes next, this comes next, and and whatever else that needs to be put in that memo because I truly believe that there's a lot of public that just do not understand what the process is entailed in this and I've been fielding phone calls for two weeks and it would be great to have a bullet point memo put together that says this is what needs to be done. And Commissioner, I would, I would also like to add to that um, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, you know <clears throat> statues mentioned too that this statute goes with this and this goes with that. I would love to have 
our legal team also, you know, provide us with some information from from a city standpoint on what applies where. What you know what I mean? Because because every every side looks at things from their point of view, and uh, even they look at statutes from their point of view. I would like to see where that difference is. You know, also from our. From I would. Our, yeah. I was kind of just under the impression that that would be part of it because I did speak to the city attorney prior about this. So um, I didn't oh. think I needed to mention it. No, it's okay. I, but I wasn't a part of that conversation, so I didn't know. I just wanted to make sure that that was Obviously. part of it. <laughs> well, what, what I'd like to know is, is this handled huh? in-house or is does this go out to another legal company? A little bit. Oh, ago. I just figured we, that we have retained Commissioner Carasone. Hang on, uh, City Attorney's answering. A little bit of we have retained special counsel that our office will work with uh, on this matter. Okay, specializes in this field. Well, it's hard to find a specialist in this field because it's it's pretty unusual. But the firm that we have retained and the attorneys we're working with do have experience with having gone through this before. Thank you. That's what I was. Trying to get across, yeah, hopefully they wouldn't be specialized in that field. <laughs> I, I would also like to see if we can add, add to this consensus um, the city attorney weighing in on this. I know you haven't seen it yet. We haven't even seen it, but the ordinance that was presented to us about the validity, um, the accuracy of the comments that are made in it, um, the timeline that they're giving, um, kind of ties into what Commissioner Carrison was. Uh, That's what I a was legal saying. review. That's what I was yeah. saying. I would, I would say, commissioners, that, that this is a bit too preliminary in the process for that. Mm -hmm. And just as a general overview, the statutes lay out an entire process right. of, you know, what the city must do to certify the petition. And once the, you know, we find whether or not the petition has met its requirements, um, then the city is required to conduct a feasibility study. And get certain information and then all of that comes back to the Commission for determination um, and so there are due process concerns and things of this nature we have to, to treat this sort of similarly to how we treat a quasi judicial hearing um, so you will get all of the information in due time unfortunately <laughs> that will not be as quickly as you like but we have to follow the process set forth by state statute so we'll be happy to work with special <laughs> counsel and either put together or get from them um, a summary, you know, like the bullet points of the steps that we have to go through in the process so um, that everyone can understand better what, what's coming next, what's coming ahead on this topic. I have a question also. Um, yeah, first me. step in the statute, it, it tells you you've got six months to do a feasibility study. That's the second step after certifying the petition. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that attorney will do, or do they bring things to us for us to do it? I mean, no, we're neither, used to neither, neither. It's typically a consultant. That's what I, I figured, because we're used to feasibility studies being a consultant that does something. We pay that consultant to bring this forward or back to us. Okay, thank you. Do you have any idea how much a consultant is going to cost for this feasibility study? Uh, no, ma'am. But consultants aren't cheap. I know. Neither are attorneys, especially if you've got to hire one that's a specialty attorney. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, our, our, our attorneys are not inexpensive, but they do really work absolutely. with us to give us uh, and to give us a discount. And we, and we have right. to. We, I absolutely agree. We have to have a specialty <laughs> attorney for something like this. Um, I think a timeline and bullet pointed kind of memo so that way then we have um, unified information for citizens that are saying, hey, what's going on with this? How does this work? This way we're informed also because right now it's like, we don't know. And, and I don't like that answer to citizens. In, you know, in the time being, it's, it's not going to be a short process. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know it's a hot topic and everyone wants it to turn around quickly and it's just not. It's a, it's a big deal to carve out a piece of your city, and there are a lot of implications that have to be considered. All those implications will be brought, provided that the petition is certified, um, will be brought before this board to, to then weigh in on them. You know, so it's, it's too early in this process to know. 
yeah. because you know, the studies have not been conducted and that information has not been gathered and presented. Fantastic. So let's get a consensus to have uh, some type of memo with a timeline based on the discussion that we had. Thank you, Vice Mayor, for bringing it up. Um, and Commissioner. <laughs> and, I believe that was Commissioner Hanks. Well, Commissioner yeah. Hanks. I think well, Commissioner Carrollson <clears throat> started it too. I'm the one who so, asked for it. I thought you brought it up. Oh, Commissioner Carrollson, yeah. Well, no, that was Vanessa. Yeah, oh. yeah, this was her commission communication. Oh, I'm sorry. I am so sorry, Commissioner Carrison. I'm so sorry. I'm used to it. No worries. <laughs> You're out of sight. So You're out of mind sorry. now. Goodness sakes. Um, so I do appreciate the, the discussion. And um, let's get a consensus to have city attorney produce something. Hopefully, you know, given the time that she needs to produce it. But she can do it. Yeah. <laughs> as, timely as, possible. as timely as possible. So Commissioner, Commissioner Carrison. Yes. Commissioner Hanks. Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor. Yes, and in the meantime, I will just state that the attorney or the legal team is working on uh, the information that we need. Yeah, Hello? absolutely. I'm, I'm definitely a yes, Commissioner yes. Mitch. Yes, thank you. All right. Commissioner Carrison, did you have anything else for your commission comments? So I had the uh, League of Cities meeting, which we're doing them all via Zoom now and um, was asked to be part of the um, the legislative action team or uh, actually I think it's a resolution committee so that's going to take place in one day online like I said um, and um, we I'll send uh, assistant city Yarborough all the information that I have and that um, on top of that, I believe, um, oh, we had a presentation by uh, Scott Dudley for the Hometown Home Rule Heroes Board. And uh, that's about it. Thank you, Commissioner Carrison. Uh, Commissioner Emmerich, did you have any comments? Commission Communications? I'm about ready to catch myself, but she said no, and then she kept going. Usually, no silence follows, but no, I don't have any. Commissioner Hanks. Uh, no, I'm just ready for the day to be over. Yeah. Uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, no, the communication I was going to have, we discussed earlier. I would like to ask Commissioner Carazone, uh, that hometown hero thing, was there any nominations, or did he just give a presentation? No, we have actual people who won. Oh, they, they, you got to see who the winners were. <laughs> okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I got to see them every day. <laughs> um, hold on one second, and I can actually give you that list. I know that Margaret Good was one. Awesome. And, uh, there's one other. Hold on. Nope, I don't have it. It's just uh, shoved somewhere. All right, that's fine. I was just wondering if it was a presentation or if they actually named the winners. So thank you very much for that information. No, what he what he did was he had all the na the winners, uh, all three of them there. And um, they had sent the pins and the certifications ahead of time so that when the presentation was made about the awards being given by Florida League of Cities, we all had them. So, along with the pin. Every time she talks, I look up at the ceiling. I know, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, listening to God or all right. something. Is, is that it, guys? No. All right. I noticed you looking. <laughs> okay, so um, the only commission communications that I have is COG meeting. Um, I learned something at the COG meeting, and I'd like to get a consensus to have acting city manager look into this with greater detail with the county. Um, during the COG meeting, 
Uh, they said that they had a ribbon cutting ceremony for Legacy Trail over by Ashton Boulevard, something like that. And I said, well, what's happening to Northport? And they said that they are working on Legacy Trail, Powerline Road. And I said, well, what exactly are you doing? And they said that they did something on Powerline Road, but they're not using the money from Legacy Trail. They're using money from Parks and Rec. Yep. And I am quite confused as to what they're doing and what is going on. And I know that they send an update monthly that doesn't tell you squat about what is happening with Legacy Trail in South County. So I'd like to get a consensus to have city assist. Acting. acting acting city manager to please produce I would reach out to the county get a memo for us um, stating exactly what is going on with legacy trail south county the may i add go ahead uh, i dug into this because i was really irritated when yeah. i saw that they were putting dirt down under the power line and i'm like what is this you know spending money when we're supposed to be getting a paved path, and it was separated. I mean, the money was not coming out of, we were told we were gonna have at least two million uh, provided for this end of the trail. But I know everybody in this room was in the same meeting when mm -hmm. the then chair stood over there and said, we are gonna start in Northport exactly. with their extension first, because it is the easiest to do and it will show everybody that their their commitment yeah their commitment. what 60 some million dollars was put into this and it would show their commitment and they would jump on northport first well everybody else all the other planning is sitting at 90 percent we were at 30 last i knew they were trying to work towards 60 percent plans for northport so it's the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. So their ribbon cutting that went on in North County is happening before it was supposed to happen in South County. So for, I'm not even going to say South County. I'm going to say Northport because it was definitely defined Northport extension. So um, we, we need a it's specific irritating. memo as to what's going on. So um, I take um, it your mayor. Can I ask? Go ahead, Commissioner Carson. I'd like an expansion on that because I'm fairly certain that part of the ordinance that actually allowed them to hold this referendum specifically stated Northport extension. And um, that was the whole reason why I voted the way I did. Exactly. Um, and so I would like a legal opinion of their inaction to use those referendum dollars towards what was stated in the ordinance and what was marketed throughout the entire county. I would agree with that too. So well, we actually have two consensuses, it sounds like now. So we'll, we'll address uh, Commissioner Carrick. God, I'm even pointing to the ceiling. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> We'll address Commissioner Carasone's consensus about a legal opinion uh, using the referendum dollars and the marketing um, for Legacy Trail North Port Extension. Uh, Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. I'm um, definitely a yes. 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 All right. So going back to uh, the consensus that I was looking for that started this was um, a memo about exactly what is happening with Legacy Trail that the county has already done, plans to do status. Um, Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Yes, I am. Yes. And Commissioner Carson? Yes. Thank you very much. Now we add one thing. I asked for this a couple of months ago, yeah. and we did not get the update. I had to find the update out through the Friends of Legacy Trail. Yeah. Um, the other thing that is um, bothersome to me and I will forward the email thread to acting city manager, um, and this is no reflection on city manager, but back in October when we had our joint meeting with the county, we were talking about River Road. 
and they talked about Winchester Boulevard and the resurfacing of Winchester Boulevard. And I specifically asked what is being done about the curve that um, has so many accidents on it, uh, commonly referred to as dead man's curve. And we were told at that meeting that they would be putting in traffic calming devices, uh, expanded shoulders, signage, blah, blah, blah. At the same time that Winchester was being done, I went back to make sure that Debbie heard what she thought she heard, and it was pretty much spot on. Um, I have asked for an update on that because Winchester Boulevard is completely finished and no changes have been conducted on um, that dead man's curve. Um, seeing that city manager was in the process of talking to county administrator, I will forward the email and maybe we can get a consensus. I, I, I don't even know if a consensus is needed. But we need to know what's happening at that curve. We've had another huge accident not that long ago. Um, and I, I, I take, get irritated when we are told something and then nothing absolutely happens after what I would assume was their word. And, and I, I have a problem with that. So I will forward it on to you, assistance uh, acting city manager. And uh, maybe then once you get an answer, you can share it with the rest of the commission. So I just wanted to throw that out there too. All right, seeing nothing else. That's consensus? I, I don't think we need okay. a consensus, okay. uh, unless you want a consensus. Will, will it, will it get, garner a better response from the county if you had a consensus? I don't think it will matter. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for Mayor. that. Yes, go ahead. I, I don't think a consensus is needed because you're probably going to get the lack of response that we've gotten for the last two years <laughs> asking about that. But, um, and it's also been brought up in the MPO as well, um, just so for a heads up, and we've gotten all the same responses from the county. Uh, as someone who's leaving, willingly, um, <laughs> Because you guys keep pointing in the air, and considering where I'm going to be next week, it's kind of worrying me. <laughs> <laughs> but you do well on your anesthesia. We, we, we know they're definitely pointing in the wrong way on that one. That. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the lesson learned here, honestly, is get it in writing. Um, you know, promises made at, at uh, you know, comments and and even these joint meetings there's got to be motions that I mean that's the only reason why I supported that legacy trail <coughs> that wording in the ordinance and so just note to those of you who will be here for more time and those who are coming on board don't ever take someone's word for anything get it in writing get it in a boat Thank you. Thank you. All righty, so now we'll move on to administrative reports. We'll start with city clerk. The city attorney, I'm sure you are just absolutely talked out, but just for the sake of. I definitely have nothing further, ma'am. Okay. Acting city manager. All right. In conclusion. Sorry, don't start causing trouble already. <laughs> in conclusion, I know this was a very difficult meeting for myself, and I know speaking for myself that it must be very difficult for the entire board for our charter officers and city manager and staff um thank you for your patience while we work through this and um i hope the conclusion is is going to be positive um so with that said mayor yes i found those num i found those names Sorry. Huh. Maybe you can get it to city clerk and she can forward it to all of us, please. Uh, sure. I could probably find that. All right. All righty, guys. It's 829 and we are officially adjourned. Thank you, everyone.